Hey besties, how are you? Hope you're doing well. Welcome back to another video. For today's video, if you can't already tell by the title, we are back with another bookstore vlog. I like to make my bookstore vlogs a little like specific or maybe seasonal. This one is a hefty little romance Valentine's Day kind of vibe. And I did some damage today on books. So I'm very excited to tell you about them all. If you're new here, my name is Adiana. I always make vlogs, but sometimes I make these sort of bookstore vlogs. And basically what we do is I come on here and I say, hey, what's up? How are you? And then we go back in time a little bit to when I went book shopping. And then we come back and I give you guys a little haul and tell you guys about all the books that I got. <laughs> it's very exciting. I'll keep this intro short and send you off to Barnes. Have the best time. You know I did. And I'll see you when you get back. sight on what's a lot because I just buy so many books not the point I went to Barnes which is when I brought my tote bag and then I also made a quick stop at Target on the way home it was supposed to be for makeup wipes but I did go into the book section what do you want me to do about it honestly I got eight books today all of these are like high on my TBR and I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I have been in my romance phase. I feel like I've been gearing up for February and Valentine's Day as it is. So this sort of themed bookstore trip was kind of a no-brainer. Um, one of those, it was gonna happen anyways, right? I was gonna do it anyways, so I figured I would just film it and take you guys along for the ride. I am thinking of doing a January wrap-up and February TBR. So if that's something you guys would like to see, let me know because I really have been on my romance kick. I mean, I always am, but I really haven't been in the mood to read anything else lately. Like, you know what I mean? Anyways. So the first book that I got is By a Thread by Miss Lucy Score. Um, yeah. Okay. If you watch my last reading vlog, I got Things We Never Got Over by Lucy Score. And then in my last vlog, I talked about my thoughts because i had finished it at that point to sum it up i'm i'm obsessed i'm obsessed with that book i gave it five stars and i was like i need to read more by lucy score her books are pretty hefty like they're pretty thick i think let's see i think this one is like yeah almost 600 pages but literally when i tell you guys i flew through things we never got over and i was like eager to read another one of her books like i loved the slow burn i loved how long it was because the way she writes like banter between the characters is just literally everything to me so this one is another like grumpy sunshine trope but it's like the workplace yeah <laughs> i'm so excited to read another one of her books like genuinely I, I swear like i'm so excited and i love the cover i feel like everyone's heard about these books but workplace grumpy sunshine romance it literally says a grumpy boss romantic comedy on the cover and i'm kinda no not kinda i'm here for that 
So I'm not even gonna lie, it's probably gonna be the first thing I read out of this whole haul. Anyways, keeping on the trend, I did get another Lucy score book. And honestly, I thought I was just gonna get by a thread, but then when I was there, I said, you know, why don't I pick this up? Because she within one book has literally become like a comfort author for me and I feel like even if I don't read this one right away eventually or literally within like a short period of time I feel like I'm gonna want to read another one of her books so I figured I would just grab this one this one's not as popular though so I will read the back for you guys under Brick Callan's mild wide chest beats a loyal heart with a few cracks in it he's the steadfast overprotective type especially when it comes to the one woman he can never have it's a long, complicated history, punctuated by fights, friendship, family, and an attraction that stains his iron willpower. When Remy Ford returns to Macnick Island, I think, in the dead of winter, Brick makes it his mission to find out what put the shadows in those green eyes, even if it means breaking down the walls he built between them, even if it means falling for the one girl he'll never get over. Remy doesn't need broody, bearded, Remy doesn't need broody, why can I not think of certain words? Like genuinely, it drives me nuts. Bearded Brick riding to her rescue again. Not when it will put them both in danger, costing them much more than their hearts. Yeah, you got me there, Lucy. You got me there. Another hefty, let's see, 530 page. Yeah, I love Lucy score. I will die on this hill. The next book that I got Mind you, yes, I said romance, but romance does not just include the good, babe. We're not shying away from the good, the bad, and the ugly over here. So that leads me to my next book in this haul. Yeah. Yeah. This is the next book that I got. I've just seen one too many people talk about this book and rave about it. And you know what? Really, all it takes is one person for me. And I'm gonna at least consider buying the book. And since this was a little bit of a romance binge, I figured why not pick it up now. It is Addicted to You by Kristen and Becca Ritchie. Like everyone that I saw talking about this on like Instagram or mainly Instagram honestly, is that they had annotated it so much. And that always intrigues me because it means there's a lot going on or there's a lot of good quotes or something is making people just constantly want to mark pages in this book. Um, so that honestly was like, aside from just people talking about the plot or the dynamic between the characters, like that was just something like specific that I noticed that I was like, okay. Cause I love annotating my books and I love a book that has just like so much that you're just constantly underlining and everything. So I am really excited to read this aside from the whole plot and everything for that reason of course you know i'm not going into this expecting a fuzzy little warm romance no no ma'am again this is a very popular one so i will spare you i will spare you all the details so the next book that i got is the fine print by lauren asher the reason that i got this book was because on instagram i guess this this is a series and i guess the third one in the series just recently came out um because i've been seeing so many people talk about the third one and that saying that it's like been super anticipated by them which must mean the first two are also very good i didn't know like much about this i honestly had just been seeing it like the past couple of days so i was like I was like literally like like gasp when I saw it because it was like seeing a celebrity and not gonna lie because I've been seeing it on Instagram non-stop for the past like two days um but yeah I'm not sure how familiar people are with this one so I will read the back Rowan I'm in a business of creating fairy tales theme parks production companies five-star hotels everything could be all mine if I renovated dreamland my initial idea of hiring Zara was good in theory but then I kissed her. Things spiraled out of control once I texted her using an alias. By the time I realized where I went wrong, it was too late. People like me don't get happy endings, not when we're destined to ruin them. Zara. After submitting a drunk proposal criticizing Dreamland's most expensive ride, I should have been fired. Instead, Rowan Kane offered me a dream job. The catch? I had to work for the most difficult boss I'd ever met. Rowan was rude and completely off limits, but my heart didn't care, at least not until I discovered his secret. It was time to teach the billionaire that money couldn't fix everything, especially not us. 
I'm in treats, honestly. Theme parks, production companies, hotels. Sounds so like different. It sounds like a really cool spin on like a workplace sort of romance, I guess. Yeah, and y'all know, Adi is a series girl. I love a good series. Um, I just do. So I'm very excited to join the club on this one. Really, really excited about that one. Next book that I got is actually a little collection of novellas by Allie Hazelwood. If you watched my last reading vlog, I talked about how I read Love Hypothesis and Love on the Brain. And Allie Hazelwood has become a little bit of a comfort writer for me. Um, I really like her, her take on romance. I love the STEM environment romance. I just eat it up. I explained why in my last reading vlog if you're curious, but yeah, this is just um, a collection. So she's written like three novellas um, and this is just all of them basically in one one little book. So I'm really excited about that. They're all very Ali Hazelwood. I think this is just be a little fun thing to have on my shelf because I know like, like I said, Ali Hazelwood has definitely become a little bit of a comfort writer for me. So I know like one day I'm just gonna really be in the mood for her writing. I'll have a bunch of little novellas to sort of dive into and knowing me I'll probably read all of these in one sitting but maybe I'll hold off and save them and read one every once in a while but either way I'm really excited about them. Yeah like I said they're all very Ellie Hazelwood, very STEM romance, you name it. One's about an engineer and a big oil lawyer. The other one is about a NASA aerospace engineer and her rival, you know. You know, I really like the way Ali Hazelwood writes like your typical tropes like fake dating or enemies to lovers, whatever it may be. They're just fun to read. They're just cute and fun to read, so I'm really excited to have this. The next book that I got is Every Summer After by Carly Fortune. I have heard great things about this one. Assuming it's a bit of a summer read, I don't know. I'm not necessarily, like I'm not always like, oh I have to read books that are about summer and summer, books that are about winter and the winter. I'm not really like that. Sometimes I am just like, winter lasts a long time where I'm at. So sometimes I'm in the mood for a little summer read, even though it's not summer. But knowing me, I probably will save this till summer because with this haul and the rest of my TBR, we definitely can afford to wait a little bit for some books, but either way, I've seen a lot of people that I trust their ratings rate this pretty high on Goodreads. So I think it's, uh, I think it's second chance. The bottom line of the back really stood out to me. It says, told over the course of six years and one weekend, every summer after, it's a gorgeously nostalgic look at love and the people and choices that mark us forever. I always find books that are told over the course of time. I always find them to be very interesting reads because I like to see how authors choose to sort of like like what they sort of choose to maybe focus it around like sometimes a lot of books that go over the course of years are focused on like one specific date or around holidays or something like that so I always like to see how authors sort of write or depict time I guess and six years seems like pretty good enough time to me but it's pretty short so I am interested to see how that plays out. But like I said, I've heard really good things about this. The next book that I got is The Spanish Love Deception. I've seen this book everywhere, I feel like. And honestly, I didn't know what it was about. I didn't know what it was. I just kept seeing it on Goodreads, like in like lists. And honestly, I clicked on it, but I never really like read a synopsis about it or anything. But I saw it in Target. By the way, yeah, what we're done talking about the Barnes books. We've now moved on to the Target books. <laughs> I just kept seeing it specifically on Goodreads. I kept seeing it in like lists. I was going through like lists of like romance books like that before um, I went to Barnes. Um, and I kept seeing this, but I didn't really know what it was about. But then um, when I went to Target, I popped over to the book section, of course, and I saw this. And so I was like, you know, what is that? Like, what is that book that I keep seeing? So I finally picked it up and I read the back. And I was like, okay, I can see, I can see, I can see what's so intriguing about this one. This is what got me. A wedding in Spain, Europe, I'm sold. An infuriating man, okay, three days to convince her family she's actually in love. Yeah. I just eat fake dating up her American boyfriend, girl. 
Catalina Martin desperately needs to date desperately Catalina Martin desperately needs a date to her sister's wedding, especially since her little white lie about her American boyfriend has spiraled out of control. Now everyone she knows, including her ex and his fiance, will be there and eager to meet him. She has only four weeks to find someone willing to cross the Atlantic and aid in her deception. New York to Spain is no short flight and her vacuous family won't be easy to fool. Enter Erin Blackford, her tall, handsome, condescending colleague who surprisingly offers to step in. She'd rather refuse, never has there been a more aggravating, blood-boiling, and insufferable man. But Catalina is desperate and as the wedding draws near, Aaron looks like her best option, and she begins to realize he might not be as terrible in the real world as he is at the office. Okay, so we have quite a few like kind of workplace romances in this haul, I'm now realizing. Trust me when I tell you I'm really not opposed to it, but I'm, after reading that I just realized it's quite a few. They're all kind of like different, like this one, I don't think this one necessarily really takes place in the workplace, they're just quote-unquote co-workers and the other one is like it's like not really like your average office it seems like you know and the other one is but it's fine because it's Lucy's score you yeah, know and the last book that I got is actually a poetry book it is pillow thoughts by oh I can't see the her picture her name got cut off what am I trying to say by Courtney Peppermill I don't know. I saw it. I love poetry. When I was in high school, I wanted to be good at poetry so bad and I was literally so horrible at it. So yeah. I live through poetry books. I love poetry. I really do. I don't know if this this one looks like one of those like super like popular poetry books, you know, but I had never like looked into this one before so when i saw it at target today i was like mm, well let me at least read the back and i did and the back honestly got me it honestly got me i was like all right well we gotta give this one a shot pillow thoughts is a collection of poetry and prose about heartbreak love and raw emotions it is divided into sections to read when you feel you need them most make a cup of tea and let yourself feel i mean you got me there babe I thought this would be just a nice little addition to my small little poetry collection and it's cute. I love a simple minimal cover design like this. Our one little poetry book in this but still kind of on that romance vibe I guess feel. I don't know. And that was it for this haul. Um, yeah, I'm so excited about all of these books. They're all sitting in front of me. I'm looking at them right now like ugh. What a good haul. Like, I don't know, should we read a little bit now? Why not? You guys know what I'm gonna read if we do. Yeah, I really wanna start this book. Let's read, why not? J'aime sentir la musique. Je peux sentir le jazz, ça, ça me fait quelque chose. Et la musique classique? Exactement, la, la musique classique c'est pour la tête un peu, et le jazz c'est pour le corps. 